Welcome, welcome. I'm Abby Griffith. I own Clarity Fitness, Georgia's first and only body positive wellness center. Uh, we are a health at every size, body positive, eating disorder informed facility. We work really closely with the really amazing mental health and social justice work that's going on in the community around equality, around shape and size and ability. We are working with the eating disorder recovery community closely and are really a big part of helping people reshape their relationship with movement as they start to get back toward movement if and when that's safe for them. Um, and super, super excited today for our webinar, which is It's All a Bunch of Hocus Pocus. Super proud of Liza for the name. She crushed it. So we are going to talk about food myths specifically in this webinar around Halloween. So releasing judgment, releasing guilt around sugar specifically, and just giving ourselves unconditional permission to enjoy our holiday season coming into think or coming into Halloween. You can take this into Thanksgiving. You can take this into the holiday season. It's truly just a, a really awesome framework of information that you can take into your relationship with food overall. Uh, but we're really, really excited to offer this information to y'all today. And again, it'll be interactive. So get your fingers ready to type into the chat to answer some true or false questions. And of course, if y'all have any questions whatsoever, we're always accepting those as well. So without further ado, I want to introduce Liza Williams. She is an absolutely incredible dietitian. We are so beyond excited and grateful to have her on the team on this webinar today. We are going to be diving into her passions of helping people find a really happy and positive and empowered relationship with food and movement and their bodies. And she is originally from North Carolina and enjoys being active outdoors with her husband and doggos. And I love that. So without further ado, over to you. Awesome. Um, thank everyone. I thank everyone for being here. And um, I thank Clarity Fitness for hosting this event um, and being so passionate and advocates for inclusivity, specifically around uh, the human body and food. And it's just such a wonderful resource um, that we are lucky to have in the Atlanta area um, and look forward to um, yeah, sharing some information with you guys. Um, I did just want to say a little bit about myself. Um, so um, you guys know a little bit more about me um, as well as about my practice, Balance Health Consulting. Um, so I'm a registered dietitian. Um, I'm very passionate about the physical and emotional health of individuals and see nutrition as a vital component um, of both of those things for all human beings food and water are a basic right and a basic human need um, and are something that unite us all. Um, I practice in a non-diet, weight-inclusive, um, health at every size aligned philosophy. Um, and I enjoy getting to know my clients in a comprehensive way. Um, so we looked at a lot of the, the past relationship as well as um, present relationship and then um, use that information to work toward future, future relationship goals around food, um, one's body um, and movement as well. Um, and in that my approach is client centered because the client is one that knows their body the best and they are gonna be the agent of change. Um, and so it's important to me to get to know them because um, that's, it's, it's their um, relationship and their body that we're working with. Um, and in terms of my food philosophy, I practice a food inclusive model. Um, so that entails looking at food in a neutral manner to remove any judgment or value or worth around food and viewing more food as food and not um, viewing it as good or bad or healthy or unhealthy. Um, and that can just help reduce any guilt or shame or um, negative emotions or feelings around food. Um, and again, like Abby said, giving yourself unconditional permission to um, enjoy all foods. Um, so overall, um, as Abby said, I really strive to help clients find balance in their relationship with food, body and movement so um, that they can eat and move um, for pleasure as well as for their health. Um, so again, thank you for being here today. I'm just going to go through a couple of nutrition myths surrounding sugar um, and metabolism. Um, as Abby said, feel free to um, 
participate in the chat. Um, that will be anonymous to the group. Um, so if there's anything that you wanna share, um, only Abby and I will be able to see it. Um, but um, also if you have questions, we're gonna save those to the end um, and uh, we'll get to those um, if we have time. So um, without further ado, I'll go ahead. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that I'm probably one of the few people in the world nowadays that have not done many Zoom presentations. So just being completely candid and vulnerable that um, I am always open for feedback, negative or positive. And if there's anything that um, I can do to improve on future or future virtual um, sessions and educations, um, I am all years. Um, so we're, we're all here to learn in different ways. So um, I'll go ahead and get started. So myth number one, um, all sugars are the same. Um, I'll also mention that I've done this in kind of a true or false method. So um, I'll present the myth and then you can think about if it's true or false, you can post it in the chat or keep it to yourself. Um, so myth number one, all sugars are the same. Um, just, I want you to think about what do you think of when you hear sugar? Do you think of it as just kind of a universal thing? All sugar is the same or are there different types? Does it look different or taste different? Um, I think sugar is a big word in terms of what we interpret it as. So I just want you to think about when you hear the word sugar, what does that mean to you? Um, and so this myth is false. And so there are actually many different types of sugars, such as fructose, sucrose, glucose, lactose, galactose, sucrose, and maltose. And all of these sugars um, are found in a wide variety of food, both non-processed and processed. So things like fruits, vegetables, um, grains, honeys, syrups, dairy products, those kind of things. Um, and so many times sugar is in that natural form um, from what it initially came from, or it's extracted to um, create a different product or be a component of a different product, such as something like candy. Um, so sugar can be you know, derived from fruit or sugar cane or vegetable or grains, things like that, and then be turned into something else. Um, that's kind of that processed or non-processed um, concept. Um, and so when we put something into our mouth um, that has a sugar component or a carbohydrate component, um, our body is going to go through the motions of digestion. So breaking that down and creating um, energy in our body. Um, and sugars are really important um, because they're our body's primary source of energy, largely for our brain, our muscles, um, and then our muscles and livers can't, liver can store um, glucose as glycogen so that we have energy um, between times of eating or when we're moving or expending any type of energy. Um, it's kind of our backup option. Um, but one point I want to make here around sugars and where they come from and um, what they're parts of is that our body does not have a judgment or justice system that is um, digesting things differently, whether it comes from a piece of candy or whether it comes from a fruit or a vegetable, um, all of those sugars and carbohydrates are going to be digested in the form of energy or glycogen that will then eventually become energy. Um, and there, it does not have the, um, the judgments or the value statements that a lot of times society places, um, on those foods. So saying that, um, if you feel that you're kind of struggling with that concept or um, are in, don't really understand that um, or get kind of caught up on that, um, one just kind of mantra or phrase that can be helpful um, to remind yourself that all carbohydrates and sugars are digested in the same way in terms of turning or being converted into energy is a carbohydrate is a carbohydrate is a carbohydrate. Um, it's all the same and it's all gonna be um, used for energy. So moving on to number two, your overall metabolism is the same as your basal metabolic rate. True or false? This one is also false. 
Um, so our basal metabolic rate or BMR is the energy that we use to perform essential life functions of living. So things like keeping our heart beating, breathing, keeping our blood sugar regulated, keeping our temperature regulated. A lot of those functions that uh, we take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis um, while we're awake and while we're sleeping as well. Our bodies never turn off. And so a lot of these functions um, are occurring while we're at rest as well. Um, and I think one thing that can be surprising is that 50 to 65% of our daily energy intake is going toward these functions. So that's over half of our daily energy intake is going toward just basically keeping us alive at the very basic level. Um, and then we also have other types of energy that's being used, um, such as the thermal effect of food. So that is the energy that we use for digestion. So the energy used for breaking down food, um, the energy used for kind of distributing it of where it needs to go, distributing those nutrients, as well as that detox process of our body, um, kind of like keeping what it wants to keep, but also eliminating um, what it doesn't need in that moment. Um, and so that's around 10% of our daily energy intake is going toward that. And then, um, also the energy that we're using when we're doing things like physical activity, and that can be things like walking or doing something more intensive or going to a workout class, playing in a sports game, um, anything like that that's exerting yourself, um, as well as the non-exercise activities. So things like cleaning your house or taking your trash out or making your bed, those kind of things. We're all using energy to be able to do those kinds of functions too. And, and that can add up. Um, and so that is around 15 to 30% of our daily energy intake is going toward those things. So also a pretty significant amount. Um, but again, I'd like to point out that a majority of our daily energy intake is going toward just those basic uh, functions. And so that is why it's so important to give ourselves adequate energy to um, not only be able to enjoy and participate in things that bring us joy um, or just daily routine things, but also just for our body to be able to function at a basic level. Um, and I think that there's also in terms of metabolism and um, you know, what, what contributes to our metabolism or energy intake, um, there's a common misconception that it can be that net zero effect of calories in, calories out. Um, and I think that that, that kind of concept um, does not take into account the energy that we need when we're resting um, and or healing um, and just like does not include this, the multitude of factors that go into our metabolism, factors that we can control as well as factors we can't control such as our genetics. Um, and going back to the energy and that we're using when we're resting, um, when we're resting, we're also doing a lot of healing and recovery, whether we're not like, we don't necessarily have an injury or something that we're healing from, but that's when our body is, is recovering from the activity um, that we did that day. Um, and so that takes energy, but when we are actively healing from something, whether it be, um, you know, an injury or a surgery, or when we're sick, um, when we've had a really hard workout and we've used our muscles a lot, those kind of things, um, we need additional energy because our body again is having to do uh, all the work to keep us living um, as well as to do that healing on top of just keeping us alive. Um, and so I always think that that's a point to make that um, whenever we're in a healing state, again, we're going to likely need additional energy and sometimes that can be hard depending on what we're going through to give us, give our bodies that extra energy. But um, there are a variety of factors that go into our metabolism um, and determining our metabolic rate on a day-to-day -day basis um, and just kind of as a whole. Um, and so I encourage you to give yourself a little bit of grace when um, you may feel down about your metabolism or confused about it um, and just know that it is a very complex um, always changing kind of thing. Um, and the bottom line is that you listen to your body and give your body what it needs to be able to, to do those basic life functions. So moving on to number three, um, I think this is um, a hot topic. 
Um, so myth number three, you can be addicted to sugar. Um, and I want you to take a moment to think about what some of your favorite foods are and do those foods contain sugar? Do they contain a carbohydrate, some type of carbohydrate? Um, and kind of what does, what does that mean um, in maybe regards to addiction or feeling that you can't stop eating them? Um, all right, so this one is false. Um, so there are many, many, many pleasurable foods that contain sugar and or carbohydrate that again are gonna provide us energy as well as enjoyment. And both of those things can provide both positive effects for us physically and mentally. Um, so when we think about an addictive substance, um, I think about sugar in a very different way um, compared to drugs and alcohol. So when you think about sugar, sugar is something that our body needs constantly. And, um, and so we, we have to have sugar to survive, whereas drugs and alcohol are substances that alter our body chemistry and are not necessary for for survival. We, our bodies do not rely on drugs or alcohol to be able to do those basic life functions, whereas we have to have sugar to be able to do those things. So it, depending on which, whichever way you wanna see it, sugar can be addictive, but out of necessity. Um, we can't function without it. And so one way that our body compensates for that, if we are not giving ourselves enough sugar or carbohydrates, um, and we are running low, which can come in the form of low blood sugar. Um, when we have low blood sugar, we typically don't feel very well, both physically and mentally. We can feel kind of lightheaded or dizzy or low energy, um, kind of lethargic, uh, as well as mentally foggy, having trouble focusing on things or concentrating on a task. Um, and that is when your body is actually breaking down what it does have. So things like the glycogen and your liver, or your muscles, um, as well as proteins in your muscles. Um, if you don't have enough glycogen to actually create sugar within your body to raise that blood sugar so that it normalizes again. Um, and that's one of the body's functions of maintaining homeostasis because your body wants to be in a state of balance. And so it has multiple systems to help it do so when you're not actively able or kind of choosing to, um, to help it out in terms of giving yourself enough nutrition. Um, so a lot of times when we are craving certain things that contain sugar or contain a carbohydrate, that is our body telling us that it needs energy because again, sugar, carbohydrates are a body and brain's primary source of energy. Um, and so when you can allow yourself to have adequate amounts of sugar or carbohydrates, um, you're not only able to give yourself appropriate energy, um, but, but you're also able to give yourself more freedom around a variety of foods and in combination with proteins and fats, it can create a very balanced, um, state for your body to, to thrive in because the, the carbs in combination with the proteins and fats, um, they all work together to maintain that homeostasis. Um, and so one thing I think that is particularly kind of to think about this time of year is, um, are you allowing yourself to have candy at all? Are you allowing yourself to have one piece or are you allowing yourself to have multiple pieces or are, are there fears around having more than one? And so um, in the chat box, if you'd like, um, again, totally optional, um, you're welcome to post something. If you've had thoughts around, if I have one insert sweet thing here, um, I can't have more than one or, um, I can't, I cannot have X item. Um, and if you want to share any thoughts around that, um, if you're like what you're struggling with, or, um, or if you've been in a situation that you have those thoughts before and have found more freedom around those foods, 
we'd be happy um, and really would appreciate hearing um, those thoughts and experiences. And again, we'll, we'll explore that a little bit further. And if there's, uh, if, if someone would like to talk more about that on a one-on-one -on -one basis, um, I'm more than happy to talk about that with them after this. So myth number four, if you eat more than usual, you will not gain weight. True or false? Sorry, my lighting is going in and out. So this one is true. So it's common to assume that if we eat more than our bodies need at any given moment, the extra energy will go to storage or become fat. Um, and this is not necessarily true or a bad thing because our bodies have many storage locations um, that act as temporary places to store energy. Um, again, to fuel us between those times of eating or when we're exerting energy, um, when times like we were talking about before with the low blood sugar to be able to pull on those um, extra, that extra energy to be able to help our bodies maintain that homeostasis. Um, and so the, the liver and the muscles, again, and specifically with carbohydrates are, are primary locations where that glucose will be converted into glycogen and be there for storage um, so that we can keep our blood sugar regulated throughout the day, um, specifically during times when we're not eating. Um, and so as we approach this holiday season, I also want to add that when we're eating in a balanced way a majority of the time, which that is a very loaded comment in itself, but just kind of basically saying eating in a balanced way would be adequately nourishing yourself on a day-to-day -day basis with a variety of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So making sure that you're giving yourself enough energy, um, as well as a mixture of, or a variety of uh, my, micro and macronutrients with that variety within each of the carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Um, and so when we are doing that, you know, our bodies are going to use everything that we're giving it, even when we're giving it a little bit more than usual. Um, and a part of normal eating is finding joy in food. Food is meant to be enjoyed. It is meant to be pleasurable. It is meant to be an experience. And, and so the holidays can be a great time to experience those the moments of community around food or enjoying kind of a seasonal specific food or flavor or foods you have memories around the holidays with as well as to try new foods. And so uh, I encourage you to just remember that, that the food is not meant to be stressful and um, we, we don't have to earn or deserve food. Again, food is a basic human need. We all have rights to it and we all deserve it. And there's um, no reason that we have to feel the need or to compensate for eating. Um, and so in this, in this time that can be really stressful and can be, um, very food centric. Um, I encourage you to know that your body can handle those times and days when you may feel that you're eating more than you usually will. Um, and that your body's still going to use all of those nutrients, um, to good use and has systems to maintain that balance. Um, and I would also add that if you know, you're experiencing any fears of weight gain, um, those fears can interfere with your engagement and participating participation in special moments. And so I'm hoping that some part of this presentation um, will help you give yourself permission to enjoy that time of the holiday season and have a little bit of uh, less stress around food because you know that your body um, is resilient and resourceful and um, is really a, um, a tool. And we, there are benefits to um, enjoying food, both physically and mentally, um, when you can kind of give yourself that permission rather than, than going into the situation in a stressful state. Okay, and the last one um, that I had prepared was myth number five. Oh, I, sorry, I already gave you the answer. Um, <laughs> uh, is that sugar can be part of a balanced diet. Um, 
there may be some kind of society things that would argue differently, but um, as we've talked about all throughout this, sugars are a form of carbohydrate that our body relies on and um, we need to be able to survive at the basic human level. Um, again, they're, they're found in that wide variety of foods. Um, so I would always like to put the plug in that fruits and vegetables are carbohydrates and they contain sugar, um, as well as grains, dairy products, honeys and sugars. Um, and again, a lot of those, um, a lot of products contain those, those foods in their natural forms or have parts of those extracted to be ingredients or other components of food. Um, so yeah, so sugars are found in a variety of foods, both processed and unprocessed. Um, and eliminating foods with sugars or sugars themselves could lead to a highly restrictive diet that would provide very low energy levels, again, which would require your body to be doing additional work to be able to maintain that homeostasis and um, normalize blood sugar levels. And that can have a lot of um, pretty significant physical and mental um, complications if um, you're restricting to a certain extent and not giving your body enough um, energy. Um, and so again, I just like to round out the presentation with this is, is that we, we need a lot of energy and energy again is sugar. Um, to be able to function at a basic level and to do those, those basic life functions as well as to be able to participate in life. And when, when we don't give ourselves enough, um, it's really hard to do that fully, um, whether you kind of feel those effects immediately or a longer term effect. And so when we talk about how sugar can be a part of that balanced diet, I feel absolutely inclined to mention that you know, proteins and fats also play a vital role in, in that part. And as I said earlier, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins all work together to create that balanced place. Um, and it's, they're also all involved in digestion. And so a lot of times when you are not eating enough of a certain um, food group, you can feel differently because um, they're all involved in the absorption of different nutrients and things like that. Um, and so when you are allowing yourself to eat appropriate amounts of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, um, you not only are giving yourself adequate energy, but you can also um, give yourself a variety of those macro and micronutrients that will keep you sustained, nourished, and balanced throughout the day. Um, and so if you are struggling with this and kind of struggling with that permission, um, I really encourage you to think about some of these things that we talked about today, because it can be really, really hard uh, if you're not giving yourself permission um, to feel that you're fully able to eat everything and, and again, can create a lot of physical and mental barriers to having that balanced relationship with food. And that can ult ultimately limit how you're able to engage and participate in your life and may kind of hold you back from some things that you want to do or that um, you were hoping to do um, as a part of a day-to-day -day life or a career goal or a trip or something like that. Um, so as Abby talked about that, giving yourself unconditional permission to eat food and to eat all foods um, can be really rewarding and it is really hard to get there. And um, I fully acknowledge that um, and again, if someone would, would like help with that, I would really love to be there to support them. And I'm really sorry about all my lighting. <laughs> so, um, now I just like to take a little bit of time to reflect on some of the things that we talked about and provide, um, some, some mantras or phrases, um, that may be helpful as we enter the holiday season. Um, so after hearing some of this information, some of these myths, whether they like, whether they feel debunked for you or not, um, I would like for you to take some time to think about at least one act of kindness that you will give to yourself around this holiday, Halloween and or around sugar, carbohydrates coming up. Um, this is a time to be really gentle with yourself 
and to take one day at a time, take one meal, one snack at a time um, if you need to. Um, and just be really gentle again with yourself because it can be an overwhelming um, season of life. And, um, and again, you deserve to participate in that, um, whether food's involved or not. Um, so if you want to share what you're going to do, that one act of kindness or um, like a, a phrase or something like that, that resonates with you, that is helpful in this kind of season, um, you're more than welcome to share it in the chat or again, keep it to yourself. Um, write it on a post-it note. I'm a big fan of putting a positive affirmation on your mirror or somewhere like a doorway that you frequently um, walk through just as a, as a, a quick reminder. Um, sometimes that works for people and sometimes it doesn't. Um, so overall, the bottom line is that your body needs food, specifically sugar in a variety of forms to be able to function at its basic level, as well as to support your abilities, your passions and life experiences. Your body does not, again, have a justice system for food, but rather sees all food as a useful resource for necessity as well as for pleasure. If you want and or are craving candy of any type this holiday season, uh, specifically this Halloween coming up, I encourage you to enjoy it and to not stress about it. Your body can absolutely handle it, whether that be one piece or a couple of pieces or however much you want, whatever makes you feel good, your body will be able to handle that. Um, and a resource that I always like to bring up around holidays is also the Ellen Satter uh, definition of normal eating. Again, I talked a little bit about normal eating and a very small component of that. Um, but if you're interested in looking up kind of her fuller definition of normal eating, um, you can Google it. It's just Ellen. Ellen is with a Y, E-L-L-Y-N, Satter, S-A-T-T-E-R. Um, she is a great resource um, and just has a really um, great definition of normal eating that um, falls in line with a lot of the things that we talked about today. Um, and also we're, we're hoping to do another talk like this around Thanksgiving. Um, and normal eating is again, something that I would definitely bring up there. So um, if you would like to attend again, um, that could be something that you could read beforehand. And if you'd like to continue this conversation further, um, or seek nutrition support, I would be more than happy to talk with you. You can reach out via email at Liza at balancehealthconsulting.com or via phone. My phone number is right there. Um, my partner is also a psychiatric nurse practitioner. Um, so she offers psychotherapy services as well as medication management services. So if, if that's something that um, you're seeking either alongside nutrition support and or um, alone. She's also welcome and accepting clients right now, and you can find her information on our website. Um, you can also find more information about our backgrounds, our services, um, our prices, and um, as well as some resources around mental health um, and nutrition are also on there that you can either buy or um, just look at. Um, so feel free to visit the website um, if you're interested. And um, yeah, and I'd like to just thank you again for coming and um, participating in the chat. And I'm, well, I'm so happy to partner with Clarity Fitness on this. And again, appreciate all of their work and advocacy um, for clients, but as well as for um, body positivity and um, all foods fit, that kind of mentality um, and just being gentle with your body. Awesome. Thank you so, so much, Liza. This was awesome. And thank you everyone who jumped on. Uh, really, really great questions. And thank you all so much for being involved in the chat. It was super fun to read and see everyone's true falses. We're getting lots of thank yous in the chat now. So thank you again so much, Liza, for coming out and doing this webinar. I'm super excited for the November one coming up and definitely more to come. Our last quick announcement uh, for anyone who is a member with the Clarity Fitness family, we are doing our member appreciation event this Friday. So two more days uh, between 4 and 7 p.m. It's totally open house. You get to paint pumpkins. We're doing a costume contest. 
lots of raffles, lots of giveaways, tons of food and snacks and beverages and all the things. So definitely come on and check that out. And if anyone is wanting to check it out, regardless of if you're a member, I might sneak you in as my guest. So just send me an email and we'll make it work. So thank y'all again so, so much. Have an incredible day. And this will be recorded and posted to YouTube. So if you need a refresher, you can find it there. Have a great one, everyone. Thank you, Liza. Thank you again. Bye.